What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we've got the Autour Laser Master 3 here to check out and review. This is the upgraded, newer version of what usually tops lists as the most recommended laser engraver cutter machine. Most lists you check out will show you the Autour Laser Master 2, and today we're going to see if this is a spiritual successor or just an upgraded version of that machine. I've been testing this out for a couple weeks, so I've got a lot of things to show you. So first we should cover the specs of this machine, and I think it all starts with that 10 watt laser module. It's two 5 watt diodes that are hitting that 10 watt output power. It is important to check the output power, not the input power. Some laser engravers have listed the input power and not the output power, so it is important to check that out. The engraving volume is 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters, so you can put a large board in here, or you can even set this entire thing on your work surface and just engrave like that since it is pretty lightweight and easy to move around. And their big spec they put all over the advertisements is that it can move at 20,000 millimeters per minute. Diode lasers are usually listed as millimeters per minute. Higher end CO2 lasers would be millimeters per second. Similar to 3D printers are also millimeters per second. So these numbers can get a little bit confusing and with millimeters per minute, you can get some really big numbers like this. And even though it can hit those speeds, it's going to be a very light engrave on wood. You might be able to use it if you're cutting more cardboard or paper, making stencils or something like that. Good to know it can go that fast, but you probably won't use all that speed. The area of the output laser is 0.05 millimeters by 0.1 millimeters. So it's not a perfectly symmetrical one, but still fairly small. And you can get some good details out of that. And that's similar to other high-end lasers like this. Another important thing is the focal length of this laser. That's sort of how deep you can cut. They say you can cut wood up to 20 millimeters. That's about three quarters of an inch and acrylic up to 30 millimeters deep. And I did some test cuts on a three quarters inch, I think oak board it was. And in four passes, it cut right through there. So very powerful laser here with that 10 watt. And with that long focal length, you get clean cuts all the way through a board that large. So pretty impressive stuff for some deep cuts. And I think this laser module here is probably my favorite part of this entire machine. It's just so well designed. It's got this little flip out arm on the front that allows you to focus really easy, get your focus distance set, and then fold it back up and you're ready to go. It's got this plastic outer housing and then this inner tube. They recommend you use this inner nozzle for using air assist. On top here, I've got an air assist hose attached and the power coming in on the other side. So it's really nice that it's all integrated. The air assist is a tube coming out the top. I also really like that this protective enclosure here covers all four sides. Some of the cheaper ones either don't have any laser guard or will only cover three of the four sides. This works well to protect from stray bounces of lasers. Safety is always my highest priority since you only have one set of eyes and this is just really nice to have. And talking about safety, it's always nice when a company lists out their safety things. There's seven different safety features they have on here. The first one is this key on the front here so you can lock the machine when you're not using it. If you've got kids around or something, it makes it a little bit harder for someone to turn it on who doesn't know what they're doing here. So you can lock it, take this key with you. The second one is active position protection. So if there's any jostling while it's cutting, it's gonna go ahead and shut off. Probably it should be on a still flat surface when it's cutting. The second one is a sloped position. If it were to fall off a table or you just pick it up, this can shoot lasers in a lot of dangerous ways. So that shuts it off immediately. Number four is exposure duration detection. So if it were to, if the motor's messed up or something and it were to cut in the same position for a while, that could start a fire and so it will auto shut itself off. Number five, there's voltage and current safety control system. That's more of an electronic side of things. Number six is a host computer watchdog. So that's another electronic side of things. Number seven is this emergency stop you have right here. That's how you turn it off if it's doing the wrong thing, cutting incorrectly. You just press this button and that will shut off the laser action. And it is a fairly satisfying little aluminum push button you've got here. Another big part of safety is making sure you're always wearing these glasses. Just because there is this little aluminum thing on there doesn't mean that's enough protection. And you, anytime you do have it running and you're nearby, you should keep these glasses on. These will keep you protected from any stray lasers or there is a little bit you can see that goes beyond this acrylic tube. I'm not a huge fan of their one marketing video where they do have a guy where he's not wearing glasses and this is running. He also has his dog next to it while it's running. Don't run this around pets or children or even open windows where someone could see in. Safety is just really important to me. 
I'm not telling you what you can or can't do, but I'm not gonna risk blinding my dog just to use a laser engraver. I always do this in the garage with only me around, and I'm always wearing my glasses when it's running. I did learn from that demo video that you can engrave on food, so I engraved some toast, Great way to make toast and any design you want on your toast. So you could consider this just a very high-end specialty toaster. So when it comes to actually working with this machine, 10 watts is so nice to have. That extra latitude in power, you get some more dynamic range, be able to go all the way up to 10 watts. That allows you to push it even faster. With all that power, you can cut thin things fairly quickly. I was, I was cutting some thin, maybe one or two millimeter sheets of wood at like 500 millimeters per minute. So thin things, you can just blast through those at very high speeds. So it means you can run it at less than 100%. That will increase the lifespan of a laser diode module. So you can still get really good speeds at 80% and not need all the full power. Here's some test files I engraved to see what sort of power I can get out of this. I'm not sure what type of wood this was. This is just the cheapest thing I could find at a hardware store. I also did some very intricate cuts. This was a multi-layer pattern I found online and I cut it out and even these small details came out really great. And the top layer did get a little more charred than the other ones, but I almost like the color. It looks like that top layer had a stain applied to it, but it was just a little bit of char coming from the laser. I also loved having this built-in air assist. It's almost essential on a 10 watt laser to have some sort of air assist. You'll just get so much charring otherwise, and this really cuts down on that and makes your cuts nice and clean and crisp. So I would highly recommend getting some sort of air pump. Here's the one I'm using. They recommend an air pump that would go at 40 liters per minute it. This one goes at 38, so it's very close. You could probably get more performance on a more expensive one, but me being cheap, I went with the cheapest one that still had decent results out of it. The next thing to talk about is this interesting design they've gone with. It's a mostly aluminum chassis here. I feel like they're trying to compete with the X-Tool D1 Pro, and I don't really get it. I think it's kind of lost on me. I see this as a tool, and a tool should have function over form every single time. And a lot of the cheaper laser engravers just use some aluminum extrusions on the side instead of these custom aluminum rods here. The assembly is pretty easy. It takes about 30 minutes to get put together. They've got an online manual that steps you through putting it all together, and it's works fairly well. Every time you power on the machine, it will do a homing. It will home to the front left corner here. It doesn't use limit switches. It just uses sensorless homing to let itself know when the motors are at the end. And that works fairly well. I think it is a little too smart for me. I was trying to move it around with my hand instead of using the software to do its jogging around of where it should be. So initially that did throw it off of how I was trying to use it versus how it wants me to try to use it. That was one that threw me off a little bit at the beginning because the only other laser engraver I've used is the longer Ray 5 and that one didn't have any in stops. But another really nice feature this has is built in Wi-Fi and there's this nice antenna here to get you your Wi-Fi connectivity. There are, I think, three different ways you can connect it up to Wi-Fi in the user's manual. They break them down. First, I tried the option of connecting to its Wi-Fi and then signing into the app in that way. That one wasn't working for me for some reason. Then the option that did work for me was when you connect this up to your computer. I had it connected to Lightburn when I was doing all my testing on it anyways. And then from the console there, you can input some G-code commands to tell it what Wi-Fi network to connect to and what the password is for that Wi-Fi. So then anytime you turn it on, it will auto connect to that Wi-Fi. You can turn on your app and from there, it is a pretty good app to be able to do some basic designs instead of needing an entire computer connected to it every single time. If you need just some simple things done, you can just connect your phone to it, which I found really easy for more simple things I was trying. Of course, if I was diving into a bigger project or some more elaborate testing, it was really nice to connect Lightburn up to it, but I do really see the appeal of being able to use a nice app. But now that we've covered the specs and usability of this machine, I think it's time for some nitpicking and the cons I have with this machine. There's a couple things I just wish they'd done better because I think at the price point this is going for, I can nitpick all I want. The first one is these floppy wires over on the side here. I wish this was in some sort of cable chain. I feel like they spent so much time designing this nice aluminum frame, which is really nice, but then these wires are just kind of flopping here. And I get, this is your air assist, it's, it's gotta flop somewhere, but I wish it had maybe a more well-planned out design than just putting cables flopping around here. Some things were really well designed. For example, the Y-axis cable runs inside of this entire arm here to the back where it connects, and that way you can swap between using a Y-axis motor or a rotary tool. Just that was a really well designed part. You have to attach these zip ties through just little holes here, and I don't know if it could be done better. 
just didn't feel as premium as the rest of the machine feels. The next little gripe, it comes with USB-A on the machine, so you have to use the USB-A to A cable to connect it to your laptop, which I think is kind of weird because most laser engravers, printers, 3D printers always use USB-B, the big one, it's nice and durable, long-lasting, and I've got a ton of those laying around because every 3D printer comes with one. So if one of those cables got damaged, I would have plenty laying around. I don't have many USB-A to A cables laying around, and so if something happened to this one, I would have to order a new one. It just seems like a weird design choice to go with USB-A. If they went to USB-C or B or Micro or Mini, any of those I think would be great, and I wouldn't even mention it here. Another complaint I have is that there's no screen or interface on this machine to let you know things. There's an RGB LED as the power indicator, and they change the color of that and blink it in certain weird codes. There's a whole page in the user's manual. And for someone like me who's colorblind, I am not gonna be that great at guessing whether it's a red, green, yellow, or orange light that it's blinking at me. So my best option is kind of just to guess at the color. I think it's giving me this motor drive error code right now. I think it's solid red and then blinks yellow two times, which on the user's manual said that should be motor drive error but it has been running great and I don't know how to reset that or turn it off. Powering it off and powering it back on doesn't clear that error, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. And I'm sure in a future firmware update, they can get that fixed. And the machine's working well, it's just always giving me an error code here, so it's never really giving me any useful information from the only indicator it has on this entire engraver. I know I am just jaded after using the longer Ray 5, which has a whole touch screen on there, but I feel like it wouldn't be that hard for them to give you a tiny screen on here, giving you just a little bit of information instead of a blinking light. And I think this is how most laser engravers do it. I just wish at this price point, it would be better. One more complaint about this light, I do wish they'd give you a printout of what those codes mean. They only give you this one little booklet here. They call it the Laser Master 3 packing list. And so it's a list of everything that comes in here and a link to the user's manual and an assembly guide. Also a little list of safety guidelines. And they have this listed in so many different languages. This is a 42 page booklet. And in there, I wish they would have just included what those codes mean. But I think that covers most of my cons I've had here. No huge cons, more just little nitpicks that I wish were a little bit nicer. And there isn't a pro badging on here, so they for sure could make a Laser Master 3 Pro and fix all those things. But I think now we can circle back to that question at the beginning of is this a successor or an upgraded version of the OTOR Laser Master 2? And I think this is just a higher end model of it. It's an OTOR Laser Master 2 Pro Pro. But with it being at this higher price point, I think it's really trying to compete at that premium diode laser engraver market and not trying to replace the previous Otor Laser Master 2. So that just about wraps it up. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And as always, if you've enjoyed and stuck this far through, hitting that like and subscribe button down below really helps me out and all that YouTube stuff. But as always, go out there and create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.